What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you five things that you can look for to help determine if a website is safe. Now this isn't a complete list, but hopefully it will provide you in the right direction. So with that being said, let's jump right in. First and foremost is to make sure the website has a secure connection. And you can do this by going up to the URL bar and indicated by an S under H or after HTTP, you'll have an S indicating secured connection as well as a padlock, which you can click on, come on down and left click on certificate and view the certificates validation information. You've got issued to helpcloud.com, issued by who it's issued by. And then of course you have a date range of when that certificate is valid. What this does is if you're purchasing something online, if you don't have an encrypted connection, your credit card information, all of that good stuff is all sent over via plain text, which means anybody that's in between, if there is a hacker or a middleman trying to get that information in between, they can see that information in plain text. But with a certificate, it encrypts the connection between you and the server, making it a lot harder for that information to be seen or they have to decrypt it in order for them to see that information. The next thing is, is check for a website privacy policy. Every website should provide a clear direction of how your data is being collected. So using the Help Cloud website again, for example, if we scroll down to the bottom, Right under legal, we have a link that takes you to our privacy policy. And if you click on that, you'll want to read through this privacy policy before you provide any type of information. The third thing is a contact information for the company. Ideally, a website should contain a complete list of all contact information, including email address, contact phone number, and a physical address. So again, using the Help Cloud website as an example, if we scroll down to the bottom, right underneath company, we've got our contact information page where if you click on it, we've got a complete list of our name, email, phone number, and of course our mailing address. And a lot of scam companies or a lot of bad websites are going to be either non-existent as far as a contact page or they're going to have pretty vague information. Just another quick example of another contact page. We're on eBay here. If we scroll down to the bottom, right here under help and contact, you've got their contact us. And if you left click on that, they do require you to sign in with your eBay account in order for you to get that confirmation or that contact information, but they do have a contact us page. And this rolls me into the next thing on the list is looking to see if a website has a security seal. Now, not every website is going to have a security seal. It doesn't mean that that website isn't a legit website. It just means that they haven't gone through the necessary hoops in order to add a security seal onto the website. So for example, again, we're here on eBay. We're still on the sign in page. You can see a Norton secured security seal at the very bottom. Now, a lot of the times these can be faked. Now, if you can't click on them, that doesn't mean it is faked but you can typically click on one in order to get a certification verification page that it will go to. If we click on the Norton secured here, you can see that it looks like eBay's is currently broken. This doesn't mean that eBay is a bad website. I think we all can conclude that eBay is a safe website as long as you know what it is, the listing that you're looking at. But overall, it is a secured site. I've had many purchases done on eBay and never had a problem. You can see that there redirect in order to go to this uh, verification page is just simply broken. Again, that doesn't mean eBay is a bad website. It just means that this link that they've forwarded to isn't currently working. So this is probably a bad example, but also a good example at the same time, showing you that a good website like eBay still doesn't have to have a security seal in order for it to be a legit website. So I know that was kind of a long winded answer. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense but that is the case on security seals. Now, last but not least is just the website content itself. You need to know what you're looking at, looking for things like pop-ups or uh, malvertising, which is just malware advertising, search engine warnings, tons of different spam. And just for example, because I'm not actually gonna go to any of these websites, for example, here's a great article from CrowdStrike that kind of lists out what types of malware there are. It has ransomware. You can see that they've got real world examples. 
and you can kind of read through this article to kind of get an understanding of what you're looking for. So if you stumble upon a website that of course doesn't have a secure connection, it doesn't have any contact information or anything like that, it's got a ton of pop-ups, maybe some ransomware examples, some spyware, adware, all of this type of stuff, chances are that website is probably a bad website and you should leave it as soon as you can. Don't provide any information to them, don't do anything. As long as you're not clicking on anything, typically you're okay, but be very careful and just educate yourself on the type of content that you're viewing on a website so you don't run into some trouble. For those that are interested in reading through this article, I will post this article link down in the video description so you guys, again, can get a better understanding of what to look for on certain websites. Now, not every website is going to follow all of these rules. Some of them will have some of these, some of them will have all of them, but that also doesn't mean they're going to be a safe website. So the job comes down to you and educating yourself on what exactly to look for. If something looks a little bit off or it looks a little bit too good to be true, it probably is, so just educate yourself on what it is that you're looking at. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully I was able to provide some of you some valuable information on what to look for when you're surfing the internet. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you liked it, you got something out of it. If you did, be sure to like, share, and of course subscribe. Those three things certainly help us grow our channel. And if you wanna support us in other ways, head on over to shop.helpcloud.com. We've got tons of cool merch lineup over there. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for what you guys do, and uh, we will see you on the next one. Peace.